Hey, this is YBR with BeamNG Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of modded props. Now, a prop is just a simple object like a cardboard box, which is the one we're spawning up right now. And with something like this, there's not that much you can do with it, so you can't really do a video for a prop on its own. But I got a bunch of props that I don't remember ever making videos for, and we're going to make a video that includes all of them in one video. Now, that one is just a cardboard box, so if you crash into it, it doesn't do any damage to your vehicle, but if you crash into it and then crush it between something else, some interesting things can happen, like right there or right there, where we actually flipped our truck over on a cardboard box. It's a little bit more durable than I would have expected. So we'll reset that, reset the box, and then we're going to go ahead and get something a little bit lighter because it's a little bit more fun, I think, if you have something that can get damaged easier. I just got to make sure not to tip it over. So we got the pigeon. And even hitting the cardboard box, it doesn't get any actual damage from that. It's only when you crush the box between the pigeon and something else. Now, on this mod, there are actually three choices, except one of them doesn't seem to work sometimes. Okay, it did this time, though. Great. So that's style A, which is like the style that we were just using, but it's on its side. And once again, you just push through it. doesn't weigh a lot. doesn't do much. And we got one more shape we could choose, which is style C. And that one is more of a, a generic-looking box that's the average size like a square cube and I have a fun idea right here if we bring it to kind of over here not inside of the jump there we go we could crush it between the jump and my car which could cause some interesting things to happen I would think so here we go yeah it actually popped my car up into the air a little bit put that again and do it again maybe we need a little bit heavier of a box to do this though we're gonna try it again with a little car and a little box and then we're gonna try it with a big car and a big box so crush and pop me up. Okay. So we'll reset that. Grab the slightly bigger box. And then we're going to crush it with a fast car. And I need to move that box just a bit because it's in the way. And a fast car can be something like the racing version of the Covet. Covet's not normally fast, but when you get the race version, they can be pretty good. So here we go. We won't be going too fast because I don't have that big of a run up. But at least 40 miles per hour. Put some slow-mo on this. Ooh, it really just popped me in the air. I did not expect that. Wow. That wasn't even that fast. I know the speedometer read 40, but I don't know how accurate that was because I'm pretty sure we had some serious wheel spin going into that. 30 miles per hour, and again, it pops you into the air. That is cool. So is it just the cardboard boxes that have that habit, or do other ones do that too? So if we got like a metal barrier, and spawn that up. And somehow it spawned completely upside down. Not exactly sure how it managed that. So I'll try to move it like there and then insert to get it upright. It looks pretty close to what I want. And then we'll just shift it over to the left a little more. Perfect. Save the spot. And what happens if we crash into that? Or crush it, I should say. We're crushing it. Ooh, it does flip the car in a really unexpected way again. I got to throw some slow-mo on this. Actually, you know what? We've flipped this car enough times. Let's get something with a lower center of gravity to see if it'll still flip that. So the bolide has a real low center of gravity. We'll just grab a fancy-ish looking one. The question is, will it flip this as well? Wing in at a pretty decent speed. And not quite a flip, but it did pop it into the air. And then it actually came out. I thought it was going to be stuck in the car, but we actually got out of it and we could hit it again. Does actually crashing into it on its own do much damage? Nah. It doesn't seem like it's heavy enough to do much damage. We kind of just push it along. But if we get between it and an object, I'm sure it'll do damage. Aww. Except I can't drive anymore. My front suspension has been ruined. Just reset them both, and then we're going to hit that thing at a higher speed to flip the car over. So this will be at least 60 miles per hour, hopefully. Come on. 60, and then extra. There's a flip! It's so crazy how they do that. Like, the ramps are just perfect for flipping cars like that. It's awesome. All right, next prop we're going to take a look at is a wooden crate. So this should be pretty similar to the cardboard box. But probably a little bit heavier, so it might actually do a little bit of damage. Once again, though, we're going to start off with the crushing test that will hopefully flip the car over. Ah, interesting. So that one actually deformed. So that one would work more as a cushion if you were to crash between it and a solid object. So we're going to do this again, but a little bit slower, so you can actually see the box deform a little bit here. So we're only going to do about 25 miles per hour or so. We're going to go directly at it, eight times slow-mo. And there is the deformation of the crate. 
And even though he basically crashed directly into that jump at 25 miles per hour, it really saved the car from damage because it pushed it up over the ramp to really just minimize the impact. Now, if we got this crate actually out of the car, that is like just a tiny, tiny smidge of bumper damage. It looks like it was maybe a 10 mile per hour crash and not a 25 mile per hour crash because if we did a 25 mile per hour crash onto something normally, it would look like that. Much more seriously damaged and sure the crashes did compound the damage, but still much more significant amount of damage there. Next thing we're going to take a look at is the destructible tire stack. Now, this is very similar to the tire stack that's already in the game, I'm pretty sure, but the one that's in the game doesn't seem to want to come apart usually. So to kind of demonstrate what I mean here, we get this, we grab it right in the middle and fling it about. You notice that that's like a solid object here. You don't see the tires separating at all. It's just a stack of tires permanently welded together or glued together. This one though, it's actually a bunch of separate tires. So if you put a little bit of force into it, you see it just separates apart like a real stack of tires would. So they have some sort of glue or something holding it together, but it's a real weak bond that you can actually break apart with the impact of a vehicle. Now we don't need a fast car to break these apart, so let's just go ahead and swap this out for a regular Ibishu Miramar. And we're gonna just hit that thing at about 15 miles per hour and it should break apart. It's not a high speed at all. And let's see, that's about 17 and boom, the tires have broken apart and they actually did a good job of making that impact do minimal damage to my vehicle. And a lot of that came from the fact that it popped me upwards. So to make it where it can't do that again, I'm gonna just go ahead and move the stack of tires behind a more or in front of a more solid object so we're going to put it over to here get a full stack up oh, kind of fell apart make it a little closer to the wall get a full one reset it so it's perfectly stacked and then we'll grab that mirror mark and go ahead and bounce into it again a little bit faster this time about 24 miles per hour and we got some damage now we're going to just do that again and not hit the tires and see if the amount of damage is significantly different so same speed about and the damage is more spread out on the vehicle because when it hit the tires it kind of focused the impact so you really can't compare the two unfortunately what we need to do then is just have more stacks of tires and the easiest way to get a bunch of tire stacks really fast is to use the map editor so we're going to hit f11 and then we're going to go ahead and grab the tire stack hit Control c and then Control v to paste it and that went in the wrong spot we're going to actually do this we're going to move the camera to right about here paste it see where that ends up move it about a little more paste it there we go. We're getting pretty close to what I want, so we're going to try it one last time, which should have it lined up properly. There we go. We're going to just put a bunch of tire stacks right around here for the car to crash into, and all these combined should do a really good job of slowing down the vehicle's momentum and reducing the amount of damage it receives. We'll put uh, three more. This is a lot of props to have to deal with in cleanup, but it should be worth it for all the fun we're going to have. Uh, that one's a little bit in the ground. We'll put one more that's not in the ground. Actually, I see another one in the ground. So that should make up for all the ones that are stuck in the ground. So now we're going to hit F11 to get out of the map. Editor. And then we got to find my car, which is easier said than done. Actually, there it is. That was pretty easy. And we're just going to ram into all those tires and see how they slow down the car really significantly. Wow, okay. Now I want to try this at a higher speed. And this is when I wish there was a reset all vehicles button because that would be super convenient right here. Unfortunately, there is not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab high speed version of a sunburst and I'm gonna reset everything. We're just gonna do this super fast by tab R, tab R, tab R, tab R, tab R. And I think all of them are reset. That's easiest way to reset everything. I think there was a button at one time that could reset all or maybe it was a mod or something I saw. I swear there was something that could do that. So this is coming in at about 50 miles per hour for a gradual slowdown when we actually hit the wall there was like no momentum left so there was minimal damage that's pretty cool how they work like that i think those work better than the one that's like a solid object because when they break apart the debris flies in multiple directions and the debris kind of also collides into your car as it's flying so it really does a better job of slowing your car down that is awesome so what if we just hit the debris that's sitting there for a round two and this one i'm not going to back down or use slow-mo we're just going to ram into it all right, there, yeah, it still did a pretty good amount of damage because there wasn't much to crash into. So now we could probably get rid of all of those props and try out the next one on the list. So the next is a barrel traffic cone, which I just accidentally replaced my car with. We'll get a different car to crash into it then. We'll just get pretty normalish looking Ibishu Pessima. And we'll just spin around real quickly and crash into this. Now, I haven't really been dropping any of the props on the cars 
Because they're all lightweight, so if you drop it on the car, it's not going to do much damage, because, like, I just rammed into that at 40 miles per hour, and it didn't damage the vehicle much at all. Will it pad the collision? Or will it bounce me? The, they can basically do two things. They can either bend like that and pad the collision, or they don't bend and they bounce your car backwards. When they bend, that's what you want them to do, because that's the more realistic outcome. Although the way it deformed isn't too realistic, I think it was worked totally fine. Next up, we have a traffic cone. Pretty similar there. What we could try to do with this, just to be a little bit different, is stick it on the car itself. And I have my camera actually in really slow mode because I was placing everything around. Oh, I was hoping it would work as like a dunce cap, but it didn't seem to want to stay. Try it one more time and see if it'll stay or not. There we go. And now our goal is just to keep it on our car as we drive because it's not actually inside of the car. Well, it actually is. So we don't have to worry about keeping it on the car. We can just drive around and uh-oh, it's starting to phase through the roof though. Oh well. Maybe we could flip the car over and try to just crush it through the roof. That's my new goal here. Gonna get a little bit of bounces in there. Not my goal. Oh, now it's really sunk through the roof. And I'm sure we could crash into this if we wanted to, but you know, a cone like that looks so much like a dunce hat, I had to add it to the top of the car. So the best way to actually flip the car over is right on these ramps right here because you can just pop it up on two wheels. And oh my goodness, the suspension test with the save. What do you think you're doing, suspension test? There we go. Onto the roof, off of the roof. And mostly uh, not moving there. So we'll just go and reset both of those and we're going to get the next prop, which I'm not doing the guardrail because I've done that in a video, is the ATM. This should be a real big and heavy one, which we could actually drop on a vehicle. Although the camera speed is so slow, it would take me 18 minutes to actually get above the vehicle a reasonable height to do some damage. So I'm going to go and fix the camera speed real quickly. Boom, just like that's it fixed. And someday I'll explain how to do that maybe in a video. But for now, we're crushing a car with an ATM. That looked cool enough to go ahead and do it again with some slow-mo. We'll do, uh, let's go with 16 times slow-mo. I don't think 100 is necessary here because it's not moving too fast. It's just really heavy. And it does damage just by its big mass. Can we still drive it? Sure we can. Just uh, not very well. And the ATM is also scraping the ground, which is slowing this thing down a bit. We'll try to flip it once again because I still want to flip this car over. Yeah, I know I flipped the last time, but it couldn't. I could have flipped it better. Like, this is a good flip. We're going to roll multiple times in the air or not. Fine, we're not going to flip the car then. Forget it. Instead, we'll crash into the ATM. Since I haven't done that yet. Now, this is the first prop where if you crash into it, it'll actually do a little bit of damage to your car, I would expect. Just place it right there. Hope it stays upright. It's jiggling back and forth. And the regular car you use to crash into ATM is the Moonhawk. Like, everybody should know that by now. But if you don't, if you ever need to crash into an ATM, you gotta find a Bruckle Moonhawk. Because those things are known for their ATM crashing abilities. And am I making things up? Yeah, of course I am. Perfect collision, so that was about 55 miles per hour. We lost about 10 miles per hour from the impact, and we got a decent amount of damage on the Moonhawk, and the ATM seems almost unharmed. So I'll go ahead and bring the Moonhawk back, respawn the ATM, and the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is the concrete block, which is one of the blocks, I believe, from the wall that you can spawn up. I got to find it. That one right there. And these blocks are very, very heavy. This is something where you don't even need to drop it from that high up to do some serious damage. This is about, you know, just 20 feet in the air or something. And massive destruction to that car because of the weight of that thing. It's a lot of weight to it. And we can keep crushing the car over and over again, which is kind of fun to do. See just how flat we can get it. I think that's about as flat as it'll go. Oh, it stood up. Oh, that's amazing. I'm going to try to drive that. So it could actually still drive, but all that extra weight is definitely slowing it down. We'll just say goodbye, extra weight. And yeah, that thing could drive totally fine now. We could also try crashing into the singular block. And this thing is a super solid object, so it would not work well as a barrier between a vehicle and the wall. Although that might be an interesting video, just testing how everything compares as a barrier versus just crashing directly into a wall. If you guys would be interested in seeing that, I think I've done a video like that before, but not with this many props. Like, I have a lot more props that I can play around with now. So, even though it's the exact same video I've done before, I think it might be interesting to see. Anyways, next up, we have to find the prop, 
we have a produce pr crate right here. That thing should be a pretty light object that I could just ram and get minimal damage from, I would expect. There we go, it's out in the open. And once again, a Moonhawk is great for ramming produce. I can barely see that. It is a small crate, so I'm going to go as fast as I can. And, ooh! It actually popped me into the air a little bit. But it didn't do any damage because I got ground clearance to go right over it. Now, if only it had produce. Oh, wait. I think you can have produce if you go to this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I knew you could have produce in this thing. So now we got apples. You could have apples or you could have oranges or you could have peaches. And you notice those are actually things that will move around. Like if you crash into that crate, those will fly everywhere. But the crate's a little too short to really crash into it. So we got to make a little bit of a uh, stack here. So we're going to grab a regular crate. Then we're going to grab the produce crate. And we're going to try to teleport it on to the regular crate by putting it right about here. Because I noticed the camera was slightly off center. Perfect. Now, all we need to do is get a car and crash into it. I want to get a little bit more interesting of a car, so how about we get this Pessima, and it's going to be like Grandma's going to the farmer's market, but she can't see. She thinks she's on the highway still. And I hope to see the fruit really go flying here in slow motion. That's perfect. The fruit really went flying. Look at you see all the little fruit. Bouncing away as grandma just plows through the farmer's market. You know, I could really actually make a market and then plow through that. That would be fun. So I'm going to go and duplicate all this up using the same method you saw earlier with the stack of tires. And since you already know how to do it, there's no need for you to see me doing it all over again because it's the same thing as before. And be warned, when you're messing with the map editor, it's really easy to crash the game, which I just did. So I went ahead and did it all over again. And we're going to grab something a little bit more fancy to plow through them this time. We're going to grab a race car because some maniac decided they wanted to sell fruit on my hill climb track. How dare they? We are going to obliterate their little farmer's market they got going on here because it is totally illegal on my property. And ooh, that was a pretty good drift right there. So hopefully we don't get too much lag from all this. I got, I don't know, about 20 crates just sitting there. No. It was looking great until it didn't look great at all. Okay, we got my hover car. We got crates floating in the air. We got even more fruit still glitching out over there. Oh, what have I done? The game won't stop glitching out. It's so loud. Oh, no. This did not go at all according to plan. Not at all according to plan. Let me reset everything real quickly. Try to fix any of the glitch things. All right, I saw it go through everything. Physics froze again, and the fruit have glitched out. Well, unfortunately, it turns out produce can be a little bit messy to deal with. Just going to reset them all again. Taking in a second. Okay, I saw my car, so hopefully they've all been reset. And they have glitched out again. Produce need to calm down. Okay, yeah, we're breaking the game completely here. This is too many produce. It was a cool idea, but it's not possible simply not possible. What I need to do here is just restart the game to get a fresh start. Much better. So anyways, the next prop is the safe, which is pretty similar to the ATM in the style it is, except it's a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter, so I could drop it from a few feet in the air and it'll only do a little bit of damage to the truck, probably. Yeah, just a tiny bit of damage, especially compared to the ATM. We could drive around with that in the bed of our truck if you wanted to and see how well it stays in there over some extreme driving, like through the suspension test and then through the jumps and all that kind of stuff. I do that jump a little slow so you get the next jump and oops, I hit it bad. You can also hit it with the car and eat it up. My car is just trying to eat the safe. I can't steer actually now because my car is stuck on the safe and I'm afraid if I try to reverse it, I would end up being completely stuck on the safe. So let's just say that's the safe. Go on to the next prop, which is a small cinder block, which is just the block from the cinder block wall right there. So I'm not going to actually do anything with that because I've played with the wall before. But the next thing we're going to actually take a look at is the sofa. We're going to set that right over there and we're going to ram it with a vehicle and see how much damage do we get ramming a sofa. About 25 miles per hour and the sofa breaks apart beautifully and does 
basically no damage to my vehicle. That was awesome, except it got stuck in the tire. Aside from that, it did no damage to my vehicle. So what if we have a really light vehicle, once again, like the Pigeon? Will it be able to also plow through the sofa, or will it have a little bit of struggle? Tiny bit of slow-mo right there in it. Kind of deflected off of it, did a little bit of damage to it, but overall, the sofa's pretty weak compared to our vehicle, which is exactly what you'd expect. Perfect. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the trash bin, which is the second from last one we got. So we're almost at the end. I think you could actually open the lid on this. Yep. And this is actually the trash bin from the pigeon that you can get on the street cleaner one, I think. It's just made into a prop. So it's just like the uh, cinder blocks we were looking at a minute ago. And uh, not too much you could do with that. It's pretty light, so you could crash into it. It doesn't do much damage. You could drop it from a pretty high height. Well, actually, almost probably an infinite height without it doing any damage because it'll reach its terminal velocity, which will probably be pretty low. Yeah, I mean, that was a huge drop, and it did a very minimal amount of damage. So the last prop we're going to be taking a look at is Vending Machine 2. Uh, you'll notice I skipped over a couple of props like High Res Cube because I've made multiple videos for that in the past. It's a slightly different version, but the main gist of it is pretty much the same. So let's see what happens if we put the vending machine in the pigeon and then try to drive it. It's actually staying in the bed. I'm sure it'll tip over the second I try to do any sort of steering. So we're going to mostly go straight here. Oh, goodness. I even just slowed down a little bit. And the weight, the weight, it's tipping me. So the vending machine, pretty heavy. I would expect the weight to be a little bit less than the ATM, though, just because ATMs need to be a lot more secure than a vending machine. But if we crash into that, I'm pretty sure we'll get a decent amount of damage, especially with a vehicle this light. Actually, it bounced off of it pretty good. Minimal amount of damage there. And we're tipping. We ain't flipping, we just tipping. So anyways, I think that's about all we're going to be doing for the props. I'm not going to bother with Leap of Death or Brutal Slope because trying to do that would be tedious and... What you would get out of it really wouldn't be that fun and just kind of a waste of time for both you and me. So let's just pretend we did and not. So anyways, until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see it.